Uh, what's up, everybody? What's up, Duchess? How you doing, man? Who's ready for a beer? I feel like today is going to be a good one. We'll see. Keep my fingers crossed. Hi, Pam. How you doing? I know, you haven't been here, what the fuck? It's been upsetting. But that's okay. I forgive you this time. Just this time. Can't wait with Ducky. I'll keep an eye on Untapped. See what you got. I know, everybody's finally, the regulars, a lot of the regulars are starting to come in now. It's about damn time. It's about damn time. Up oh, four o'clock. You know what that means. Let's fucking do this. What is up everybody happy friday and welcome to another live beer review today we got another one from noon whistle i've talked about them before give a little backstory really quick noon whistle started up in like the northwest suburbs of illinois kind of having two locations i think it's two locations but they started because the owner used to live in a town in wisconsin called whistle i think it was whistle yeah and what they used to do there is they used to have a like a bell that toned at noon which meant that it was their first, it's time for the first beer of the day. Which I always think that's one of my favorite kind of startup reasons for a brewery. So, yeah, because today we're going to be looking at some Waving at Strangers from Noon Whistle. Their, their barley wine. I'm excited for this. It's 11.2%, so a little higher up there on the ABV, which is okay. Definitely not. No, Derek, this isn't a chuggable one. This is not a chugging beer. So... I'm really excited to, hang, to drink this one. I'm about to stop beating around the bush, and I want to get into this one because 
I'm excited for a good barley wine. So let's see what we're getting on the nose. Oh yeah, very malty. Getting like some chocolatey notes. Maybe like some sweeter, like a caramel or a toffee kind of smell with it. Definitely getting that that 11.2% coming in there. Definitely a little bit boozy, which I'm excited for because I I need a nice higher ABV beer today. Today, drinking out of the my untapped tulip glass. One of my favorite ones because it's my bigger size tulip glass, I guess you could say, so I could fit more beer in here. But let's give this guy a pour. Oh yeah, look at that. That deep kind of malty, caramelly color. Not to the point where it's like as black as a stout but pretty damn close yeah so it's I'm this is an English barley wine so despite I'm expecting to get some maybe like a little bit of like spice notes on there from like different seasonings or something I don't know but yeah still getting a lot of malty up the front kind of like some kind of like caramel toffee kind of sweetness Maybe getting like, I don't know if there's a little bit of like a coffee note in here. Can't really tell, but yeah, I'm expecting this to be damn delicious. So, cheers, everybody. Oh, yeah. So, right up front, you get like that malty kind of malty sweetness with like a little bit of like a burnt sugar kind of caramel toffee kind of note with there. Definitely feel the booziness going on in the throat, so you can definitely tell this is 11.2. Doesn't really have like a syrupy mouthfeel. It's, it's slight syrupy, but not too much. It still has like that kind of like effervescent, like bubbly mouthfeel as well. So it's like a mixture between a little bit syrupy and having that nice crisp kind of not too lingering on the mouth kind of flavor. But overall, this is very, very good. I'm enjoying this. Like, it's so similar to what, like, to me, a, bar a good barley wine is that stage before a stout. And to me, it's fantastic. This is absolutely delicious. It doesn't have that quite kind of black as your soul kind of color yet. It still has that little bit of, like, an amber kind of tones to it. A little bit, like, of a dark, like, it makes me think of, like, a really dark fruit, like a date or a plum kind of note in there as well for the color I'm guessing too and I'm getting a little bit of like some dried fruit kind of element to it so overall this is pretty damn delicious I'm liking this so let's see what this profile this beer is so this is one of their occasional beers they don't this is not a year-round release so they probably would release this one I guess during like the winter and all that stuff fall winter kind of situation because they want to kind of stick with those heavier beers during the winter to keep for like those cold cold days so waving at strangers is a malt forward has a full rich body with a beautiful dark brown colors and ruby highlights this english style barley wine showcases flavors of chocolate toffee and dried fruit characters which are balanced by warming alcohol coming at 11.2 percent this sweet little sipper must be enjoyed responsibly so yeah I see maybe that when I was saying I was getting like a little bit of like a coffee element of maybe kind of like I wonder if the chocolate they're using in there is kind of like a darker chocolate to where you kind of get those like roastier kind of like chocolatey tastes I don't know to me like when I see like a dark chocolate and like kind of like the coffee flavors they kind of come to where like a similar similar flavor profile for me but I'm definitely getting that like toffee sweetness in there a little bit like I'm like I'm thinking this is like a I'm trying to think of if this is like between a date or a plum I don't know if it's the same thing or not but it definitely I taste those like dark fruit elements like a dried fruit but overall this is pretty fantastic pretty fucking fantastic I can see this even pairing really well with like a nice red meat I don't know since I'm thinking they're going off like an English an English style barley wine I can see where it's this is gonna sound weird I don't know if anybody's gonna be into this kind of thing but I've never tried it before but for some reason I can see this beer pairing really well with like a blood pudding that you would get out of 
the UK or something. I don't know if they're if they're sticking with an English style. I feel like the, a food pairing would either be like a nice red meat or something with a little bit more of an irony kind of taste of it. So blood pudding in the UK, yeah, that would be kind of. I think that would pair well if you're into that kind of thing. I've never tried it before, so I wouldn't know what that tastes like. So, okay, so a date is a dried plum. Okay, so yeah, I'm definitely getting those like dark plum aspect flavors to it but it's overall really really delicious so let's see what people on taft are saying about this one so like i said before is an 11.2 percent uh with 559 different ratings this beer has an average rating of 3.36 out of 5 which is pretty damn good pretty damn good i think for me i would put it up a little bit higher from that on tap rating just because i really like the flavors i'm getting from it so let's see somebody gave it a 3.75 somebody gave it a 4 Somebody give it a 4, somebody give it a 3.5, 3.75, 3.75, 4.75, so this guy really likes it, 4, uh, 3.75, yeah, so people are enjoying this one, I think, it's a pretty good, like, higher, just a little bit above average rating, but, no, I'm not boofing the fucking beers, people, Jesus Christ, I'm not pouring beer into my ass, that's not a good situation. Exit only, god damn it. I think if you're into a stout, I think you'd like the kind of darker notes in this as well. So it's like, if you're a fan of a stout and haven't tried a barley wine yet, it's probably right up your alley. Because all the, there's so many similar elements to it to where you're getting maybe like chocolatey notes, dark, deep, like dark fruit notes, so like a dried fruit kind of situation. It's getting like a sweetness out of it too. Maybe getting like kind of like a barrel aged kind of flavor in there as well depending on if the bar barley wine is barrel aged but this is fantastic i'm really enjoying this one so let's see let's start going on the scale uh label um to be honest here i'm not the fondest i'm not really that big of a fan of this label i don't know it just doesn't seem like it would fit for it being the kind of style no it just the lettering on here seems weird. Okay, so you got the new whistle up top. But then having like the waving at strangers and it kind of like dashing off on the bottom. I don't see why they did that. I guess it just seemed like and everything's upside. I don't know. I don't like this to me. This is my favorite label. It just like the lines don't seem really appealing to me at all. I guess it kind of reminds me of like a postage kind of thing where it's if you had it shipped to you and the lines possibly can stand for like a going a bunch of different places when it comes to being shipped to you. I don't know. I don't see any like insignia or kind of what if this is a drawing out to something. I don't know, but it's not. This isn't something that would catch my eye at a liquor store too much. It just seems like it's uh, somebody just took a blank label and just took a highlighter to it. I don't know. To me, not my favorite. So I'm going to give this like two and a half, two point seven five 2.75 for label rating. I would have liked to see something a little bit a little bit more in that English style when it comes to a label or just done it like how they did the percolator where it was like the black label having that kind of like vinyl-y kind of look to it. Just having something really clean and sophisticated. This one, it just seems like, I don't know, just, it's just a lot going on. I get there's the waving at strangers on the front right there, but I wish there was a little bit more to this label. So, I think I'm going to go with like a 2.75 for label rating. But let's see. If I got this in a flight at Noon Whistle, would I get another glass of this? I most definitely. I really enjoy the flavors I'm getting. I like I liked like the toffee kind of sweetness to it. I love just the maltiness about it. Because the malt in there kind of adds like another sweetness element to it as well. Loving those kind of like dried plum date kind of situations I'm getting here. It kind of adds like a slight bitterness to it, but then it gets washed away by the sweetness. So it's like you could tell this isn't a stout because there's so many elements that are similar. It's just gives you that slight hope of thinking, oh, I'm drinking a stout, but then it changes on you. Which overall, I like that kind of thing. I love when the flavors in your mouth kind of change overall through the drinking experience. But yeah, this is fantastic. I'm really a big fan of this. So let's see. What is my final rating on this guy going to be? 
like I said, um, it has a 3.63 rating on Untapped out of five, which I think, in my opinion, I think it should have a little bit more. That's the picture of the island of Isle in England. Super cool and accurate label. Your poor taste is showing. Well, yeah, I don't see when it comes to me knowing this stuff, Chris. I don't know. I'm more into like more detailed kind of labeling. I guess I don't know. I like I said, I didn't know that that was what you said it was. So if it's my poor taste, it's my poor taste. Whatever. But to me, that's not something that stands out to me. But that's just, like I said, everything's, a, it's opinions, everybody has their own opinion kind of thing. It is what it is. So, I think my final rating on this guy, because like I said before, I definitely get uh, this glass on a flight. At, well, I, I get another glass of this if I got a flight of it, 100%. I'd actually probably get a four pack of it, leaving in the brewery, just so I can enjoy it more. But... I think my final rating for this guy is going to be a solid, like, a solid, like, 8.75 to 8.5. I think I'm going to give it a solid, uh, fuck, I'm trying to choose between the 8.75 and 8.5. I'm going to give it 8.75. I really enjoy it. I love the flavors I'm getting from it. If you're ever in the northwest suburbs area, I'd recommend hitting up Noon Whistle and trying out this beer. Because if you're into this, like, the kind of barley wine slash stout kind of style, this would be right up your alley. And it's absolutely delicious. Absolutely delicious. So, Noon Whistle dropped, like, just knocked it out of the park with this one. One of my favorites I think I've had from them. I think the Percolator's up there with that, with that Scotch Ale, but I think this one... I enjoy a little bit more than the Scotch Ale. So, I'm a really big fan of this one. Like I said, the label for me is nah. But, it is what it is. So, I think that's where I'm going to go. I'm going to give a solid 8.75 out of 10 for final rating on this guy. Really, really solid. I definitely will be looking to kind of try to find this one or if I ever go over to Noon Whistle. Um, this is one I would probably get a get a glass of while I'm there just because I enjoy it if I'm there during that season when it's released. Um Derek, uh, I'm trying to think. I'm not uh, let me look really quick. Because I don't know if they really sell it because some of these micro brews, Derek, a lot of the times when you get to when you like shipping some of these micro brews you have to kind of get a to a situation to where you're either in the area so it's like they have curbside pickup or kind of thing or a lot of the times to where you get the stuff and you can only really get the cans of it at the brewery a lot of the times where most people just go to the brewery and drink it off tap but if you want to take some home you either get a growler a crowler or you can buy the packaged cans that they leave at the brewery i know i was talking to lee yesterday and he was telling me like Pentacolas another beer that I did earlier this week do it to where you can only find their stuff at the brewery you can't find them at like bottle shops liquor stores that kind of thing but so it's like if you're ever up in this area Derek Noon Whistle I think would definitely enjoy you had being there because just overall this one's just really really solid new missile has comes out with a bunch of variety of different beers they can have one from a simple ipa to your simple sessionable just like a lager or like a pale ale kind of thing but they have a lot of variety and a lot of cool different like releases when it comes to seasonal so it's really cool so i'm really enjoying this one but i think that is all i have for you guys today so like i said before if you're ever up in the Northwest suburbs and kind of in if you're going if you want to check out New Missile they have two locations up located in Naperville and Lombard Illinois so you can have you can have two choices to which one you want to go to depending on where you are so I'd recommend you guys checking them out if you're ever in the area but yeah I think that is it guys so thank you everybody for tuning in I greatly appreciate all you guys and of course the regulars hanging out in chat you guys are awesome all the regulars love it 
And if you're watching on the replay, I greatly appreciate you guys as well. You guys take time out of your day to watch my stuff, so that's awesome. So gotta always shout out the replay crew when I can. But if you're new to the channel and you this is your first video watching, thank you for checking me out. If you like what you see, make sure you hit that like button along with that subscribe button with that notification bell. I feel like when you subscribe to a channel, that notification bell is like a hand-in-hand -hand kind of situation to where you click the subscribe button, but you're also clicking that notification bell because you like what you see anyways. So thank you guys again. Greatly appreciate it. Remember, if you're going to drink, drink responsibly. Don't drink and drive. And cheers, everybody.